So welcome to what is medical speech language pathology. I'm Dr. Dargan, and I'm a clinical assistant professor at Yeshiva University. So first off, thank you for coming. And you'll see from time to time I'm having my cup of tea. I always say I um, I love tea and I have tea time with my students for advising. So if you come here and you're in my advisee, which will happen your first semester, then we can have tea time together. So during tea time now, we're going to talk about what is medical speech language pathology. So our program here is different than a majority of the programs in the country in that we really focused our curriculum towards medical SLP. You can see this uh, picture. Um, a patient is breathing into a pneumotachometer, which is a breathing apparatus device to um, give us some numerical data for um, aerodynamics. So we are the CAT school at Yeshiva University, and we have a very unique specified uh, curriculum that was created specifically because the professionals in the New York City area felt that there was a need for more medical speech pathology training. So our program is set apart from most in that we do have a curriculum focused just on medical SLP. In that our curriculum focuses not just on one credit of uh, dysphagia, which is swallowing disorders, but two, we have pediatric dysphagia and geriatric dysphagia. So that is a uh, five credits out of the 66 credit hours. We have classes that are mandatory specifically just in aphasia, just in motor, um, just in craniofacial anomalies. Those are class, a lot of those classes are found in one instead of separate. So you get a lot of information that will set you apart from a typical CFY that's graduated from a curriculum looking to do her um, a nine months of fellowship so she can be or he can be licensed. And so we feel that the curriculum here is set up so that you would set apart, stand out apart from the other um, applicants. We have specific courses on a &P, which you probably already have had at an undergrad level, and uh, we offer that again at the graduate level. And you may be thinking, so medical SLP, how is that different from just general SLP? So every curriculum, every degree, it's true that every degree is a degree, so um, any SLP um, degree will allow you to practice in the whole gamut of SLP as long as you have the required expertise to deliver that information. And our curriculum is set aside so that you are given um, that information in a medical setting. Perhaps sometimes in um, a school you may not be offered all the education you want in a specific area such as dysphagia or, or aphasia and you'll need to do some extra education outside of your schooling. Here we try to give it all to you so that you feel confident in a hospital setting. So in a healthcare setting, where can you get your job? So out of all 100% of SLPs, 38 of them work in a healthcare setting, according to ASHA from 2011 data. You can work in hospitals, and those departments are ear, nose, and throat doctors, neurology, um, I mean, the list goes on. Specifically, you'd probably be working with laryngectomy patients, voice disorder, swallowing disorders, um, to name just a few. Nursing homes are another uh, great avenue to have a, a job. Outpatient clinics, private practices, and the list goes on. So there is a need. Um, SLP is one of the top 10 uh, careers in demand and it's just going to get more and more popular as uh, people get older and babies are born. So we treat what one of my colleagues, Professor Medved says, cradle to grave. So we have a huge depth and breadth to our, uh, to our area. And here, I thought this would be some good information just to show you that for medical SLPs, this is where 13% of those 38% work in hospitals, 9% from a skilled nursing facility, home health is 6%, and then et cetera down. So we have anywhere from 15,000 roughly for the 13% of the hospitals on down. So that's, that's a lot of SLPs. Um, but it also means that to work in a medical field is competitive, more competitive than a school, 
because uh, you 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 need the skill set. So we offer that skill set in your um, graduate studies so that you will be able to uh, stand apart when you go to your um, fellowship year. So that's a basic rundown of what medical SLP is. Uh, there are courses that are taught specifically on medical SLPs in some school settings. And so that was just a little taste for you, what we are about here at Yeshiva University at the CAT School. So again, just to reiterate what's on the screen, we really prepare you to work in medical and the school settings. So you get the language um, um, information as well as ASHA requires us to do. Thank you so much for your time. And uh, I hope that you'll apply here and think about coming to Yeshiva. Are there any questions? Um, thank you. Uh, so yes, one question, <laughs> it's tea time. Uh, so one question here, I do have, uh, does a medical SLP program require more science prerequisites than a general SLP program? Um, no, so ASHA just requires that you have um, a physical science, a biological science, and there's a list that they require. And if you, if you have a bachelor's degree in, in speech path, you probably have already fulfilled all those requirements. So our school is no different than any other school. It's still a speech language pathology degree, and you are would not have to do any more science courses than preparing for any other um, master's level application in SLP. Awesome, thank you. And I did notice a few uh, People have just joined, so just a heads up, if you do have any questions, if you want to drop down the question box, you're able to type in a question that I can read off to Dr. Uh, Dargan. Um, another question in the meantime, if somebody does come up with something, was maybe just a little background about yourself of how did you, Dr. Dargan, become an SLP? So I was a singer and performer first, and I was in the middle of my master's degree, and I developed reflux, and it really took me out of my singing, and of course that bothered me. So long story short, I wanted to fix my voice, and I got really interested in the science of the voice, and so one thing led to the next, and I started my PhD in, in voice science slash speech language pathology at the uh, med center at um, the University of Kansas. And that's where I um, learned to become an SLP. At first, I thought I would just get the science information and teach in a music school. And the longer I uh, studied SLP, the more I became in love with our field. And it's a, a great broad and depth field, like, like I uh, stated. So um, our field really can incorporate a lot of diverse backgrounds. And we actually um, like that and encourage that. Um, so just want to thank everyone for taking time out of their day to join us. And um, thank you again, uh, Dr. Dargan, for this great presentation. Great. Thanks, everyone. Have a nice day.